frequently diodes are put into a circuit to limit the voltage across a certain place to protect um, equipment or protect another part of the circuit from excessive voltages. These circuits here are referred to as limiting or clamping circuits. The first two, sir, and, and we're going to analyze these using a constant voltage drop model where a V sub D will equal 7 tenths of a volt. These first two circuits are basically the rectifier circuits that we've seen in the past, the half wave rectifiers. But you'll notice the transfer characteristic on these two, on all of these, are plotted as the V in and V out, or V out as a function of V in, not as a function of time. So you can imagine that the input voltage V in is starting out at some large negative number and increasing, in this case, increasing until it gets to the point that the input voltage is great enough to push the diode open to get the diode conducting. When it starts to conduct, it will then have a constant 7 tenths of a volt drop across it. And as the input continues to grow beyond 0.7 volts, that additional voltage will drop across the resistor. So the transfer characteristic of this is this V out equals V in up to the point that V in equals 7 tenths of a volt. At that point, conduction begins and the voltage will go no greater than the 7 tenths of the volt. So this diode is protecting the output voltage from getting anything greater than 7 tenths. This circuit is, is basically the same thing, only with a diode going in the opposite direction. So now you can think of V in starting out at some large positive number, and when it gets to the point that V in is less than 7 tenths of a volt, then the diode starts to conduct, and you'll have that plus to minus 7 tenths of a volt, which is just the opposite in reference direction as the output voltage, so it then limits at 7 tenths of a volt. This circuit has a com combination of those two. Under positive voltage, this, this diode will limit this output voltage to 7 volts, or 7 tenths of a volt. And under a negative voltage, this diode limits the output to, seven, to negative 7 tenths of a volt. And so the output will swing between plus or minus 7 tenths of a volt. In this circuit here, the output follows the input until the input gets large enough to cause this diode to conduct. But you'll notice the cathode of this diode is lifted up above ground 5 volts. So the input has to be 5 volts greater than this before the diode will start to conduct. And then when it's fully conducting, there will be a 7 tenths of a volt drop, and you'll have plus to minus 0 0.7, plus to minus the 5. So the output voltage then is clamped, clamped or limited at 5.7 volts. This final circuit involves two diodes that are known as Zener diodes. Zeno, Zener diodes are diodes which act the same as any diode in the forward bias direction, but they're designed under, under the condition that at some negative voltage, they break down, some predefined, they're, they're designed to break down at a certain voltage, which is known as the Zener voltage. So in this situation here, when the voltage is positive and growing positive, it will conduct, this front diode will conduct, but this one will stop the conduction so that the output will track the input until it gets to the point that the voltage across here is great enough that with a 7 tenths of a volt drop across there, plus that Zener voltage, the voltage, a reverse bias voltage that this thing is designed to break down at, you then will limit the output at a voltage of Vz plus 7 tenths of a volt. And then when this input is going negative, it's just the opposite, then this one will conduct, and this one will Zener, and the output then will be the negative of this forward bias voltage plus the Zener voltage.